Welcome back to Flight Level Zero. It's been a little rainy out here on the west coast for a few days, so we haven't been able to get out and do a lot of sailing, so I thought I'd put together the boat tour that we promised you in the last video. SV Aeronautical is a 2002 Veneto Oceanus 42 center cockpit, which makes it one of the very first 42 cc's that Beneteau produced. We bought her about two years ago and immediately had the standing rigging replaced. We also had two new sails made for the uh, boat. Both the main and the 140% Genoa are new. We had a to-do list of other improvements that we wanted to make to the boat, but it was mechanically sound, so we made the decision to go ahead with a purchase and we started the refit right away. We're going to run through some of those improvements and we'll show you what we did. When we bought the boat, uh, it had the original interior from 2002. Here's a little preview of what it used to look like. Um, a few months ago, we went on vacation to Europe and we knew we were going to be gone for about a month. So, uh, Carmen went to the upholsterer and found some fabric that she liked and worked with that upholsterer to uh, make some uh, to come up with a pattern for the uh, for the interior that she liked and this is what she came up with and what you'll notice is uh, that we had everything done new pillows new cushions um, she even decided to go with new foam in all of the seats because the uh, seats the the foam in the seats was from 2002 as well so it was pretty thin and uh, not very comfortable but um, yeah all new interior we also removed the original uh, dining table the salon table because it was too large um, it, and you'll see it in a lot of Beneteau boats it's the same table that you see in just about every Beneteau boat of this era um, it, it's a very large table with a uh, with a wing in the middle of it to expand it out it lowers down to make a platform to turn this into a berth, which is great, and uh, and we're going to do that eventually. But the problem that we ran into was this, with the original table, because it was so large, you couldn't open the uh, stairway to get into the engine compartment with a table in place. You had to remove the table, uh, store it somewhere, and then open the engine bay to get in there and do any kind of work. And it was really aggravating every time we needed to do something, and quite honestly, it's just the two of us, so we were more interested in the comfort of the seating arrangement, and this works perfectly for us. This, this table is still large enough to have the two of us at the table having dinner, and then an open seating area uh, when we just want to lounge around and watch TV. Um, the uh, nav station is pretty much original to the boat. Um, one of the next projects we're going to do is replacing all the electronics. What, one thing that I did do is I replaced the uh, VHF, so that's a new VHF. We'll keep that. The uh, chart plotter, the old Raymarine chart plotter, and the, uh, the uh, multi-display is going to end up going. And uh, we're going to replace that with some new B&G uh, hardware here pretty soon. Um, this is fantastic. The uh, Vesper, Cortex Vesper fantastic little radio that's uh that was a huge improvement and and they came out with this after we had uh already installed the new vhf so it was kind of an afterthought but boy do i love that uh, wireless radio it's fantastic you can actually so the box is inside this cabinet um, this radio you can actually hook up uh, i think up to 10 radios on that one box um, not that you would ever need it on a boat this size but but uh, we could easily hook up another one so you could have one down here one up top but man is that a great little device and i highly recommend that if uh, if you're looking for a new vhf setup the nice thing about it is that but man is that a that's a great little device. You can see the screen that it, that it has now. Um, it also has uh, AIS. It has a little plotter on here with AIS. Um, so we can see all our friends. Hey, look at that. Keel Dragger. If you don't know Keel Dragger, go look him up on YouTube. He's got a great channel too. Um, buddy of mine that's got his boat right here in the uh, close to the same marina. 
but anyway, you can uh, you can pull up a plotter um, and see all of the other boats around us. You can you can. It, it's just a great device. You, you you need to look into it if you're not familiar with it. Anyway, um, so this is a two cabin layout. Um, we have the uh, the uh, berth up front that has a full head. It's a wet head, um, but it's a nice size bed. Um, my daughter stays up here most of the time when she comes in town. It's got a nice little seating area over here. Closet behind the uh, behind the door. Um, nice head. Uh, it does have electric heads on uh, in both in both uh, bathrooms. Um, nice, very comfortable design. Um, something that we did after we got the batteries in was we replaced all of the incandescent lights with these uh, LEDs. I think there were 28 of them. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep, 28 of them. Um, took a couple of days to go through the boat and and do them all. We actually uh, went through and put all the connectors on them at home and uh, brought them out to the boat, did them while we were sitting at anchor out on Catalina. So gave us something to do while we were out there. But anyway, uh, walking on back, we've got a, uh, a galley uh, kitchen with a uh, Force 10 stove. Uh, we've got a, a uh, two tub sink, uh, hot and cold running water, as well as uh, raw water. Um, not real, not a big fan of the, uh, the top loading fridge, but it works. We have battled this thing since we bought the boat. Um, it is a voltage issue, we determined. Um, now that we've got the new batteries, it's working much better, but I do have a new uh, compressor controller on the way, and I'm gonna be installing that here um, in a future video. Uh, lots of storage. We've got just a ton of storage in this boat. Um, down below, uh, all around, we've just got a ton of storage. Makes it a really nice setup. Walking into the aft stateroom, uh, this is what sold us on the boat. Uh, if you're out looking for a boat and you're watching all the videos of people telling you what kind of boat you should be buying, buy the boat you want. Buy the boat that you think is going to be comfortable for you. Um, don't listen to all the uh, critics and pundits on uh, YouTube. Uh, at least in relation to the layout of the boat. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. What you like is what you like. And don't let anybody else sell you on something that uh, that you're questionable on. Pick the boat that you like. This is what we like. We wanted a, uh, a large stateroom for the two of us. And this boat has it. It's a really nice, comfortable, queen-size berth. Um, it's actually a little larger than a queen. Um, I call it an extra-large queen. Um, but uh, really nice for the two of us. Again, we, we uh, changed all of the lights back here. We've got LED reading lights over the bed now that have um, USB and USB-C plugs for, the, uh, for charging uh, iPads and phones and that kind of thing. Um, we do have TV back here, uh, so we can, uh, we can kind of lounge in the back of the boat. Um, extremely comfortable when you're at anchor. Um, you can get a really nice night's nice sleep. Plenty of seating around here. Uh, lots of storage as well. There's two closets, um, two hanging closets, one behind, one behind the uh, bathroom door right here for Carmen. There's one on the other side behind that door for me. Uh, we also have the side tables with cabinets over there that are actually very deep and can store a ton of clothing. And underneath each one of these settees on either side of the uh, bed um, has storage as well. Uh, going into the uh, into the uh, uns the uh, ensuite uh, bathroom here, um, full bathroom. We put in the uh, the teak grates on the floor because one issue that we had was when you took a shower, the whole floor back here would uh, would have a little bit of water in it and would take a little bit to drain or a little bit of time to dry it out. But it's a nice little setup. We've got a medicine cabinet right or a uh, towel cabinet right here. You can see it's deep enough to put some uh, quite a few towels in it. We've got a medicine cabinet behind each one of these mirrors. There's one here, and there's one here as well that's a medicine cabinet. Um, again, it's got an electric head, um, hot cold running water on the sink, and a uh, stand-up shower um, that works really, really well. Uh, I love this shower. 
that's the original shower head and I'm not going to change it because it works so well. Um, it's a very small 10 gallon um, uh, hot water heater, but man, you can get some nice warm showers after a hard day on the boat. Um, get in there and get the grime off of you and then uh, crawl back here in this fantastic uh, aft uh, bunk and, and uh, just enjoy a really nice night. Um, and that's about it for the interior. So let's go up top and uh, we'll take a look around up top. So right here in the cockpit, uh, shortly after we bought the boat, we made the decision that um, we were going to change all of the canvas. And uh, part of that was getting new cushions back here. Um, these cushions were really old and I think they were original to the boat as well. So we had new foam cut and uh, recovered it in the uh, same fabric that we use for the uh, canvas on the boat and uh, made a huge difference. It's much more comfortable now. Uh, we'll start at the uh, bow of the boat and I'll go through some of the uh, changes that we've made since we bought it. So as I mentioned earlier, we put two new sails on the boat and new standing rigging. Most of the running rigging has been replaced. We also had a gentleman come out, redo all of the teak right after we bought the boat. And he's done a great job keeping it, keeping it up for us. I'm going to keep using his service. If anybody's in the Cabrillo area or San Pedro area, let me know and uh, I can get you his contact information. We do keep a Texas flag still flying on the mast. We are originally, I'm originally from Texas, and it's a good way for people to find our boat. That windlass right there is also original to the boat. We've got a, a the boat came with a Bruce anchor that I'm not real happy with. That's going to be replaced here very soon. Probably going with a Tigris windlass and uh, either an Ultra, a Rockna, or a Manis, something like that for a new anchor. But uh, we'll deal with that uh, at another date. All of the canvas has been redone, at least most of the canvas. Some of the uh, window coverings are original because they were still in pretty good shape, so I didn't bother to replace those, but the rest of the canvas is all new. Eventually, we're going to have to replace the uh, lines for the boom vang and the, uh, the outhaul. Those are two that I did not replace yet, and they're getting to be pretty aged. So at some point real soon, I'm going to have to redo those. The canvas was done by Pelican Loft here in San Pedro. They did a really good job. I believe the gentleman's name is Jim. Um, it took a while. It, it took a while to get him out to the boat to get it worked on, but he's done a great job. Those two handles right there I added. Uh, we needed some handholds right there along the, uh, the uh, side deck. The old uh, plastic Durad vents have been replaced with chrome metal uh, stainless uh, Durads that I bought off of Amazon. I think they look better and they definitely add better ventilation. The uh, Traveler I'm not happy with. Obviously it's an old pen Traveler. Those things don't work real well and I have plans to upgrade that to, uh, to something quite a bit uh, more modern than that. We're going to be taking that off and replacing it here soon. The back of the boat's where we've done a lot of work. The, the nice thing about the design of this boat is this back deck. It's like a huge patio back here that we can lounge around on. But I've done a lot of work back here. We added the uh, davit system. I had that made by Garhauer Marine here in the Los Angeles area. Um, and I do have a welder that's going to be coming out to the boat and, and uh, changing those wire lifelines in the uh, rear pulpit to uh, to hard rails. That's going to be a big improvement for the boat. This is another, another great feature for the boat. It has this uh, boarding step that folds down from the back of the boat. You see this on a lot of modern boats and I think the 42cc was one of the first designs that that had this uh, this kind of a layout with this wide stern 
in this boarding step. And the nice thing about this setup is that when I lower the dinghy, it lowers down right on the edge of that step. So it gives you a real nice transition for uh, just about any of your guests to walk down the steps and step right into the dinghy. The dinghy, by the way, is a uh, Highfield um, 290. I, I replaced an old, uh, an old soft bottom dinghy that came with the sailboat. Um, it was in pretty rough shape and it had a little four horsepower motor. So I bought the Highfield, bought a Tohatsu 20 horsepower. I know it sounds like a lot, but the 15 and the 20 horse are basically the same motor. Um, and I figured, well, you know, for a couple hundred bucks extra, I'll get the 20 horse. If you take a look at the starboard side of the stern there, you can see the radar tower where I mounted the Starlink antenna. That's been a major improvement to the boat. One of my major projects shortly after I bought the boat was replacing all of these windows. Those Lumar port lights are very difficult to install and get correct and keep them from leaking, but uh, we managed to do that. All 14 of them were replaced. Here's a little bit of a uh, spec sheet on the boat. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. If you did, we're going to be back to sailing again here in a week or so, so I hope that you come back and join us for future videos. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. It would really help us, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again here real soon.